The wind's picking up. It's getting a little colder out here today. But me and Cooper are gonna run down and get the sprayer. Come on. Oh, are you kidding me? Every so often in a blue moon, it's like the ignition sticks a little bit. But now she started, now that I tell you about it. Ladies and gentlemen, what we're going to do is move a little rock. I want to make just a little path here so everybody can get to our little shed and stuff without walking through the mud. You can just dump it wherever you want. What we're getting is three inch rock. That way it's a big rock, and then once it gets packed in, we'll put driveway rock on it. But if we try to put driveway rock on it right now, it just don't work very good. There we go, boom! Ah, oh, it's nice, it's nice. Ugh. The beans all crack good. We rolling? I don't know, it's supposed to rain. Conditions are definitely not optimal, but it's crunch time, so we're gonna try to get some soybeans out. Hey, stay off the grass! And it's sprinkling. Ooh, a letting her eat! Today's one of those days we're gonna try to get as much done as we possibly can in the time we have. They're talking rain later this afternoon. Look at these bean stems. They are still green. The really big thing I'm looking for right now is when these beans go through the combine, they gotta be split out of their pods. So when it's damp, these pods do not split open. They actually feel pretty good right now. But I'm looking on the ground to make sure we're not seeing any pods that still have beans in them. Looks like it's doing a pretty good job. I'm really not seeing any, any pods at all, actually. Oh, burr, it's cold out here. So we're on tabletop. Bada bing, bada boom. Doing 100 bushels with blue sieves is pretty good. Doing a hundred? I need a hundred. <laughs> oh man, that ground is loamy. Did you open them up a little bit? Yeah, I said it was kind of pulling a little hardish. And I walked back and I'm like, hey, your sieves are closed. And now it appears we are having problems with our air filter or air cleaning system of some sort. Yes, we're lucky we didn't lose the whole radiator. Bearing or something out on the fan. Are you kidding me? We got some these bolts, them, and then this whole thing to take this off. Hey Coop, what number is your sleep mattress set at right now? <laughs> None, because I don't sleep. Do we need to pull that whole blade out and see what's there? Or? Yeah, I don't know how we're going to get it out. Does that radiator slide forward? Is it on a track? Hi, can I speak to service department? <laughs> I wonder if that bolt just came out of the end. There you go. That shaft right there is what our fan mounts on and it spins around that so it gets driven by the engine then the belts spin the fan which blows air through the radiator to help keep the engine cool. So I think what happened is on the end of that shaft there's a bolt that holds the bearing on and we think that bolt snapped. Which would have made this fall forward, belts fall off, hence it wasn't cooling. I don't think there's a bolt that holds that on there. Really? You see how there's this... I see the groove. You know, put your phone down there and look in there. There's no way a bolt threads in there. Huh. It's just like a cavity, which, I mean. Does Titan have a breakdown of it? How it sent me it, but it doesn't make any sense. And they you said, said some the, have bolts and some have snap. Said on, depending on your serial number break. They said some of the newer ones had a bolt, some had a snapper. With the wind and it's kind of cooler, it's just be a little more fun working on the combine in the heated shop, but these things happen and we're just gonna have to deal with it and hopefully we can get it put back together and get things running. Cooper and Presley, they got the hub back on. I've been just kind of handing them some tools now and then. You can only get so many people in this little hole here. We're gonna try beans again and when I say we, I mean Cooper. There's a lot of questions, people asking why is only Cooper driving the combine lately? The reason is we've been trying to get some different issues figured out with the combine. It's easier to leave one guy in that machine so he kind of knows what he's playing with, what he's adjusted and everything. Let the one guy get everything figured out and then that way I'm not jumping in later and like, oh, did Cooper do this or did he go this way? Bean C 
seem fairly dry, but the stems are a little damp. We need sun. Why do I always get in the wrong area of the dust? Maybe I'm a dust, a dust muppet. Yeehaw! Right now, I feel like, you ever see like a monkey stuck to like a oh, buffalo or something? The monkey's sitting there like pecking around looking for food. That's what I feel like right now. Let's go catch up to Cooper. We got Presley pulled in with his semi, so he's gonna load up a load of beans. Looking a little bluer off to the west. You know what they say about the blues. Could be rain coming. We just got rained out. Neva brought the cart back, so we got that inside. We brought the uh, bean head home. I gotta run in the back real quick, so everything's in the drive. We got her, Neva. It's pouring. Oh, Dad, what are you looking forward to on this rainy day? Oh, oh, geez. That was the interest paid to the bank. You'll need that sheet. How long have we been waiting now? An hour. A little over an hour. An hour. <laughs> Just got told our lawyer doesn't have a car. He's not here yet. So what do we do while we wait? I suppose we could go through the drawers and stuff here and see if there's any exciting things to look at. I haven't really thought about it too hard, but sitting here at the attorney's office, since we've been sitting here for an hour in the office, will we be charged for office time? Or are we put on the payroll? Uh, hit a deer. Oh, no kidding. Seth, I just want to let you know we're recording for quality assurance purposes. Okay, good to know. <laughs> <laughs> we got a little bit of some... A little bit of bittersweet news, I guess we could say. The petty bone, the tickler bone, as Dad likes to call it, is leaving the farm. Titan Machinery in Centerpoint, Iowa was so kind to help us out with the bin site. They let us use this on extended demo all summer. So today is the day it's gonna go back. Yeah, and we wanted, I wanted to personally thank Bruce there too. He has been so excellent with us. So if you guys are looking for this kind of stuff and other case equipment, they have them a lot. Do look them up at Center Point. Bruce is there. They got another a lot of crew there. We've been so, impressed with Bruce. Basically, anytime you call him, he answers. Or you send him something, it's it's within a couple minutes, not like two days later. So yeah, keep it up, Bruce. Super Thank you for guy. everything you've done for us. Hey, Uncle Ron. Hey, how we doing? What you doing, working on the snowblower? Well, I'm trying to pump that tire up and I can't, I can't get at it. Here it is, guys. The new couch for the man cave. Oh, yeah. Woo. Oh, I forgot to tell you. This is kind of a rare moment, but we ordered a pizza today for lunch. I will say, as much as I don't like going to tax appointments. Yesterday was a pretty good day for it. We got just about an inch and three quarters of rain yesterday. I know it rained two inches two days ago. So right now the ground is pretty saturated. We weren't able to do anything yesterday because it was so wet. Well, I guess I take that back. I did end up tearing out my bathtub yesterday. And I think if you knew that's all that was holding you above that ceiling, I don't think you would have wanted to use that bathtub. Now, as per usual, perfect timing. The Ben guy has just called me, and they said they need the telehandler because they want to put in some fans and they want to put in the doors. So I had to give them the bad news. They had to run off and get some stuff. They said they're going to be back in an hour. So I'm going to go out and run that skid loader for them when they get back. But in the meantime, I'm going to see if I can get this old bathtub casting out of here. I still have a little bit of prep work I need to do to these exterior walls plus the ceiling, so that way this will be ready for insulation, because right now that room, the bathroom, and this room have zero outside insulation on them. All right, too wet to go in the field today, so me and Cooper, Cooper's been working on the combine here, but he just hooked onto the corn head. I think we're gonna be putting the uh, devastators on underneath, I think. Anna. Hi, girl. Hi, girl. We're just missing that one nut. Oh, that's gotta be cool. That's a lot better than it was before. Ready? 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 
So it looks like now the bins are pretty much ready. There's a bird up here. Where'd you get in here? But anyway, sounds like the bins are ready, other than the fact that we are waiting for brackets to hang the fans from, and the floor sweeps need to be put together. Now I got one more thing to do before the insulation guys come. I have these little pockets down here that go down about six inches deep. They're full of insulation. We need to get all that scooped out. That way they can get everything spray foam down in there and then we won't have a cold floor. Cooper's running around kind of lubing a few things up, getting the head hopefully pretty well close to ready to roll. You know, I like the whole house renovation and everything going on, but that insulation, oh. It's itchy. Overall, for the year that we had, I'm actually pretty pleased with how stuff went. So corn, we sold $760,000 worth of corn. We had 137 bushel per acre corn average last year. The drage oak came and blew everything down and we also had a drought, so that affected it. But we got pretty lucky because we decided to go in and try to pick all of our corn, or at least as much as we could. So that's where we were able to get the 137 bushels in the bin. And then crop insurance kicked in. So the way crop insurance works, we got 137, but we take our five-year average, which came in in the like around 215 or so, and then they take 80% or 85, depending on what coverage you had. We had 80% coverage, so 210 times 80%. That gives us what our guarantee is. So then we got paid the difference on 137 bushels to whatever that 80% number was at a prorated price on that difference in bushels. So basically it came out to by the time we paid our crop insurance premium, we ended up getting paid $160,000 by the insurance company. So just over 900,000 in corn sales. The government, yes, I, I want to talk about government payments. I don't know if anyone's ever talked about that or not. They paid us $120,000. So there was several programs this last year. There was a, a whip payment, which came around the windstorm that we had. And then we had a CFAP payment. And I believe there may have been something else or there may have been two rounds of one thing or another. But anyway, that came up to $120,000. So that really helped out the farm. And then with soybeans, we had a little bit of a rough year since the derecho came through, destroyed our bin site. We didn't have enough room to store really any of our soybeans. So we had to take those straight to town from the field. So we ended up just selling them for $8.80 average right out of the field which is kind of a bummer, because if we would have the storage for those bins, basically right after harvest, price went up like $2 a bushel. So, I mean, <laughs> we would have made an extra 100 grand just by having some storage for our stinking soybeans. And we probably should have stored them at the co-op instead of just selling them at the co-op, but we didn't foresee much carry in the market at the time. Then we had some unforeseen variables come in and just shot the price up. But overall, on the income side of things, we made up pretty well for the year that we had, but on the other side of my little sheet here, we got our expenses and <laughs> stuff was a little wild. And some of this is also a little inflated because of the insurance claims we had, like in our big machine shed and stuff. So a few of these may be a little higher than they normally would have, but it basically came out to, basically when it comes to the rent that we pay to rent the farms we rent, the land payments that we have on the farms that we are buying, and our chemical seed and fertilizer, that comes out to just about, oh wow, $750,000. We paid $45,671 for diesel fuel and gasoline. Crop insurance cost us $26,000. Property insurance cost us $22,000. Then we paid $73,000 for repairs, $38,000 for supplies, $25,000 for trucking, $12,000 for utilities, $6,500 for miscellaneous expenses, which is actually all of our lunches, and then the good old payroll tax, and then that's just a note for me. I am missing one set of income figures, and that's how our options are doing on the Board of Trade, so our puts and calls, but I'll let Seth take care of that. He'll call and get that information, but without those figures, which I guessing could be anywhere from 50 to $100,000. The farm is currently sitting at a negative $47,000 gear. So does this mean the farm actually lost $47,000? No, it doesn't. This is just purely calendar date for everything because literally the day after our fiscal year ended, we could have gotten a check a corn check, let's say for $47,000 and bam, we're break even, or it could have been a $130,000 corn check. And then all of a sudden we're on the plus side. 
And it's also a little deceptive because we run our farm through a corporation and then we have different entities that own different things throughout the farm. So the corporation rents from those entities. So let's say I have an entity that owns the combine. The corporation uses the combine, but it rents it from me. So it writes a check to that entity. So this entity is still paying taxes on that money, but it makes it look like it's an expense on the corporation side of things. So let's say it's $47,000 for running the combine on 2,000 acres. You can kind of get numbers a little mixed up like that. But I guess, technically speaking, the farm did lose $47,000, but the owners of the farm did not necessarily lose $47,000. That would be a better way of saying it. Please don't hold all of my numbers as gospel here, because a lot of these are just really broad generalizations, breakdowns. All the, the number statistics and everything I said to you, those were exactly what we paid. But with how a little bit of like, the farm layout and everything works or even how the crop insurance stuff works i had to just broad generalization it up a little bit otherwise it gets really confusing and then you just keep talking 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 and talking and i'm sure you guys are already sick of hearing me talk by now so i don't need to be talking more than i already do now, as for the hundred and twenty thousand dollars that the government paid us I, I really have mixed feelings on this to be honest because the way i was raised you know my, my morals say hey it's it's wrong to take that money I mean, you didn't do anything to earn it, so you shouldn't get it. But then the other part of me is like, well, if they're offering this as a tool for injection into the economy and all my other neighbors and everything else are taking it, then all of a sudden, hey, if I don't take that, now I'm at a business disadvantage compared to everybody else. So we did end up taking the money and we are using it as it was intended to be used. So we're injecting it back into the economy. We're buying stuff with it not just pocketing it up, saving it, so that way we can buy a boathouse. But, I mean, that's my feelings on that kind of stuff. I figured I might as well just be transparent about it. Okay, guys, well, that's all we got for today. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.